times. Grateful thanks to the Communist Party of Great Britain, Marxist Leninist, for accepting our invitation and attending this extremely auspicious occasion. This year is the 70th year of the world people's victory over fascism, in which not only people in the West, but people in the East, the Chinese, Koreans principally, played a great role. It is well known, at least to those who are not willfully ignorant, what contribution the Soviet people made in defeating German fascism in the West. But it's not as much known the sacrifices made by the Far Eastern people, especially the Chinese and the Koreans in the fight against Japanese militarism, Japanese colonialism, and Japanese imperialism. It's also the anniversary, 62nd anniversary, of the start of the Cuban Revolution, which has left us a legacy where little Cuba stands as the proud holder of the red flag with its proud symbols of hammer and sickle on it flying in Latin America. Jorge Luis Garcia, representative of tiny but heroic Cuba, 90 miles from a friendly country called the United States. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thanks uh, everybody uh, for the support that has you been giving us from long time and uh, thanks for Ambassador of Korea for your uh, kind words uh, about uh, my country and the recent uh, situation that we have been facing. Uh, we know very well each other that uh, imperialism has been uh, usually used the mass media to in order to uh, uh, spread fast uh, news and information and misleading information about our two countries. But uh, our two countries uh, has been moving forward uh, every year and we keep it in that way. <laughs> and I'd like to assure you on behalf of the Communist Party of Great Britain, Len Marxist Leninist, that as ever, we shall continue to support your just demands and it's nothing short of a crime, literally not only against Cuban people, but also against humanity, that your part of the territory should be occupied illegally by the United States <coughs> of America and used as a torture chamber for bringing political prisoners from all over the world and unjustly detaining them and torturing them, all of course to promote democracy, freedom and human rights. Okay. We, we support it and of course, of course we will continue to campaign for the normalization of, of relations with you. But of course, as the ambassador from DPRK has said, America has changed its form of attack on you. America has merely changed its tactics it hasn't changed the aim of regime change because that's what it seeks in Cuba. Mm -hmm. And the Cuban comrades don't need to be told by me, I have no revolutionary experience. They have the revolutionary experience. They know how to fight that and wish, we wish you really well. Another country of medium size and weak compared with the United States imperialism also in Latin America, which is fighting to free itself from the clutches and tentacles that it has been enveloped by U.S. imperialism um, <coughs> in that part of the world is Venezuela. Ever since the Bolivarian Revolution, led by the late and much lamented Comrade Hugo Chavez, the Venezuelans have been fighting to make sure that their country's wealth belongs to the Venezuelan people and is used for their benefit and not for the benefit of foreign imperialism. Hugo Chavez is unfortunately no longer with us, but his place has been taken by Nicolas Maduro, and all kinds of attempts have been made to undermine the Venezuelan government, to seek its over, over, overthrow. And I'd like the um, comrade from the embassy 
uh, Elena Menendez to actually take this message from us to the embassy and to the people and government of Venezuela that we in the Communist Party and the Marxist members support their struggle for independence and for socialism and we're with you and with these words I ask you to say a few words. Thank you. I, met, I have to present myself. I'm Elena Menendez. I'm the press counselor from the Embassy of Venezuela. I send you greetings from the ambassador of Venezuela and the United Kingdom, which she, she, her name is Rocio Maneiro. I come today in her name. And well, as all of you know, Venezuela and the Bolivarian Revolution is uh, having a hard time. Well, from 15 years ago, we have been having a hard time. We were one of the first, of course, along with Cuba 50 years ago, to, to take a, a step forward for independence against uh, imperialism, United States imperialism, but also from uh, the, uh, the, the enemy within that was our economical elites that have a very strong tie and bond with the United States and its interests. The 24 of July, that was yesterday, marks the, another anniversary of the birth of our uh, national hero, that was Simón Bolívar, the first liberator of uh, Venezuela, Colombia, Panama, Ecuador, Bolivia, in the 19th century, that was 200 years ago, a independence struggle, a national struggle, a struggle for liberation from the Spanish Empire in the 19th century, and now, 200 years later, we are also in another kind of struggle against another empire, and uh, we need all the, all the solidarity we can to overcome this new aggression of uh, U.S. imperialism that has this very long uh, history of uh, trying to intervene in Latin American countries, especially, always, when they have progressive or leftist governments that seek the, the well-being of its people. And well, we hope that we can have more solidarity and, or a continuing solid, solidarity from, from the, the parties that understand and the people that understand what's happening in Venezuela. Well, I'm open to any questions that you have. Thank you. If the year of the victory of the Korean people in the Fatherland Liberation War against Japanese imperialism and against American imperialism. And I call upon Comrade Hyung Hak Bong to speak to you first. Very, thank you very much, Comrade Hak Bong. And Communist Party of Great Britain, Marxist Leninist. It is a really great honor, all the time, great honor and pleasure for me and for my colleagues who represent the DPR Korea to be invited and you know, to join the hands and to join the voice of solidarity among the you know, international uh, fighters against imperialism and colonialism. So as he said, you know, I came directly here to participate to this uh, wonderful and very important function. So uh, in this regard, or, um, I thank you all, all of you, you know, who warmly welcomed me. So during, I spent uh, more than three weeks in Pyongyang. So I came with fresh air from Pyongyang. <laughs> so you know, I, I know there are many questions and curiosity about what is happening in DPR Korea. So I'm prepared to answer to any question you raise. So people constantly talk in this country and in the United States of America about the violation of human rights in North Korea. It's all a fake story. But I always say to them, even on the assumption that what you're saying is right, we have killed four million Koreans is that not a violation of four million people's right to existence, right to live? You've destroyed. The Korean War proves a number of things. As Conrad Kim also never tired of saying, it showed that small people, if they're determined, and if they're guided by revolutionary theory, 
and if they take up arms and fight with a united will, they can defeat the mightiest power in the world. And the Korean Revolution became the banner of many other small countries in their liberation struggle. They took great heart from the victory of the Korean people because it's always a good example catches on. You know, if the Koreans can do it, so, so can we. The various people, Vietnamese people, Cambodian people, Laotian people, and of course, a parallel revolution that was going on next to Korea was of course the great Chinese revolution, you know, in 1949, four years after Korean liberation, they achieved their liberation from the joint forces of Chiang Kai-shek and their supporters in the imperialist camp. Secondly, it actually proved that notwithstanding their language of human rights and respect for life and democracy, how brutal and savage the imperialists were when they fought against Korea. Any one of you who has gone to Korea will visit various places. You will visit Panmunjom, for example, the dividing line that divides Korea up to today. There's no reason for that dividing line. That dividing line should go. At one time, Reagan went to Germany and he said, I address Mr. Gorbachev, let the Berlin Wall come down. Well, the Berlin Wall, sadly in my view, is gone. But equally, even more sadly, the wall dividing North and South Korea is there and we call upon US imperialism and all the imperialist powers yeah. to let this wall be demolished. It's time. It's time. <laughs> and let the Korean people sort their affairs internally by their own efforts, by their own part. Let the South Korean part and the North Korean part meet up with each other and decide what is to happen in their country free from interference by U.S. imperialism or anybody else. And we demand, therefore, on the 62nd anniversary of the victory in Fatherland Liberation War that the American imperialists should withdraw their forces and leave the Koreans to have peace. They're constantly going on about Korean weapons of mass destruction. What are Korean weapons of mass destruction compared to the huge arsenal that the imperialist powers, especially the United States imperialism, have? They have nuclear weapons in the southern part of Korea, and there are 30,000 American troops occupying, not to take into account their bases in Japan and other places in the area. The Koreans are constantly living, literally. They are sleeping on a pillow under which are American nuclear weapons. So we shouldn't be talking about Korean nuclear weapons. We should be talking about the imperialist nuclear weapons. Let them withdraw. If they're genuine about getting the world rid of these weapons of mass destruction, let there be a demand from everywhere for universal, non-discriminatory, and verifiable disarmament of these weapons everywhere in the world. Koreans will happily join us. You think, you think the Korean leadership feels pleased that it has to spend so much on defense? No. But if they did not have, but if they did not have these weapons, they would be invaded. Even imperialist politicians are saying, they want, somebody came recently said, we generally don't invade countries that have nuclear weapons. I.e., if you don't have nuclear weapons, you make yourself liable for aggression. And the Koreans have understood that very much, that the only way they can defend is with the language of force, because reason is not something that the Americans understand. Koreans are divided. They are the victims of unjust American aggression. The other thing that the Korean War proves is there's nothing like fighting for a just cause. In that war, although the imperialists had all the most sophisticated armaments, the Koreans were fighting on the side of justice, on the side of independence, on the side of national liberation, on the side of socialism. They won precisely because their cause was just. They not only then, in that just cause, received help from the old mighty Soviet Union and from the People's Republic of China, but the whole of progressive world humanity was behind the DPRK. They knew their cause was just, and everywhere they made their feelings known. And you know, in war, apart from weaponry, the spiritual sentiment of the masses all over does matter. It encourages you to fight, and it discourages and demoralizes those who are fighting an unjust war. And that's what happened to the Americans. When the Americans were finally forced on 27th of July, 1953, to sign the armistice, it was the first time that Uncle Sam, or other words, the United States imperialism, had to sign a accord 
that they had not resulted from victory. It was used to invading countries, country after country and winning victories. But they were fought to a standstill, had to sign an accord. They had to sign the armistice because they had not been able to win. What we demand is there should be a proper peace treaty so that Americans are deprived of any excuse for staying on the Korean Peninsula. Korean Peninsula belongs to the Korean people and to nobody else. Let them decide how they will deal with their internal affairs. Just as the Americans decide how they'll deal with their internal affairs. I have a lot of ideas about changing the American internal system. But we generally leave it to the American people to do it. There's a lot wrong with America. There's a lot that can be put right. Does that make sense that it's the richest country in the world, most powerful country, and 20% of the population is food insecure, i.e. goes hungry. So it's not the function of riches to provide food, health, social security, employment, etc. of any people. It's the function of a social system. Come on. This is what happens when you call the cops. You get your rights violated or you all get shot. This is what happens when you call the cops. This is what happens when you call the cops. This is what happens when you call the cops. You get your rights violated or you all get shot. I'm sick of people being victimized by criminal cops. Psychopathic predators terrorizing neighborhood blocks. Equipped with pepper spray, mace, cuffs, tasers, and glocks. They like serial killers acting out subliminal thoughts. Forget what you taught. These cops have got a license to kill. Witness intimidation means that they can use it at will. Code of silence means that the pigs will never let out a squeal. And if they go to court, they know the judge will make them a deal. For real. Can you just imagine what will happen in America if there was socialism? They could really then spread socialism, democracy, and human rights everywhere. As it is, they're having to go everywhere and try and teach people democracy at gunpoint, i.e. subjugate people. Imperialism <coughs> does not want freedom. It does not stand for freedom or independence. It stands for subjugation. Not only socialist countries, which North Korea is, but also countries that take an independence stance are constantly the target of it. The Cuban comrade here can tell you what they have faced for the last, uh, ever since their, their, their revolution in Cuba. What have the Cubans done against the United States? Have they invaded the United States? Have they committed any other acts the United States resorts to every method to squash the Cuban Revolution, from terrorism, blowing up planes, spreading poison among their animal population, spraying their fields with to to toxins of various kinds. That's what the Cubans have to suffer. And it's a great tribute to these people. In Latin America, it's like as it is to the North Korean people in the Far East part of, the, of, of this world, that they actually are able to survive in those conditions and maintain their social system. And may they continue to do so until such time as they're joined by a lot of other countries and that makes their burden of having to carry on with their social system far, 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 far easier. Americans so death and destruction on every inch of the North Korean territory. But if you really want to see how humane they are, if you really want to know how lovely they are, you should see the work of their savagery and brutality by visiting Sinchon, where over a period of very short time they killed over 35,000 people. There were women who were left in yards and compounds who had their children with them, just to actually lessen their misery, they were singing songs. The American Air Force comes, douses them in gasoline, and sets them to fire. This is the kind of human rights that the Americans actually practice. You have to imagine your own wife or sister or somebody else and their children being incinerated like that to actually get the horror of what the Americans were doing. And Americans, murder people, literally murder. It's not war. It's not war when you come from high in the air and incinerate people. And then they say, we congratulate our gallant pilots who have been risking their lives to do that. You should from time to time visit DPRK. You should from time to time visit Cuba because these delegations are acts of solidarity. They show to the people of the country 
you are not on your own. Yes, we are literally voices in the wilderness. We do not command great support among the working people of this country. But there never will be unless you begin somewhere and actually mobilize people. And Comrade Ambassador, and Comrade Luis, Jorge Luis Garcia, we are here to express our support for your revolutionary struggles.